Hello everyone, uh, my name is William Loche, uh, and I'm going to present you the paper Exploring Dunn Structures in Parameterized Complexity. So this is joint work with Daniel Lokstanov, Saket Sorab, and Mirab Zet. So dense structure, in fact, what we want to study is dense graph, and in particular, what we want to study is alpha dense graph. So graph G on n vertices is said to be alpha dense. If every vertex um, X has degree alpha times X. So every point C is a constant fraction of the, the vertices of the graph. Um, so this is a classes of graph which has been studied a lot uh, for approximation algorithm. Um, and so this started with the paper by Aura et al. in 1995, so a long time ago, where they showed the existence of beta cells for a lot of problems which do not admit such algorithm in general case. Um, and these problems mainly are about cut problems, so bisection, k we cut, but many others. Um, and starting from this paper, there has been a lot of study for these uh, problem in this graph um, with very nice result and very nice ideas. And in fact, this has these, these ideas went on to um, other problems uh, which do not generally concern dense graph. For example, uh, Godrashid Ait in 1998 uh, showed the relationship between these problems and property testing uh, in learning theory. Um, so, a few years later, we also have uh, Alon et al, so 2003, that show that basically the same type of ideas can be made to um, design PTASs for dense uh, CSP. Um, okay, so generalization of the, the previous problem. Um, but we can also say that, for example, in general graphs, so not only um, alpha dense graph, but any graph, the PTASs for correlation clustering, when the number of clusters is fixed, um, also result from all of these ideas that have been developed for this uh, alpha dense graph. Okay, and here we have like two papers, the first one by uh, Jyoti and uh, Guru Swani, 2005, and then Karpitsky and Shirley gave like uh, efficient PITAS uh, for this problem in 2009 using the same type of, of arguments. Okay, so, so this has a rich history uh, with very nice results and um, also, and mainly, very nice ideas. Um, so here, what we wanted to study in this paper was these classes of, of graph uh, in from the point of view of parameterized complexity and see if the ideas that have been developed before, but also other ideas uh, can be used um, to solve the problem efficiently. Okay, and particularly what we are interested in, uh, but not only, is the design of sub-exponential algorithm. So we said that an algorithm is sub-exponential if it's FPT, but the running time is two to, to the little of k. Okay, and here it will mainly be two to the square root of k at the exponent. Right, um, and so the, the paper has um, several results, but one part, which will be the part that I explained today, um, was to use the same type of ideas that design that has been designed for PTAs uh, to design sub-exponential algorithm for a lot of similar problems. So, uh, in particular, we have the following theorem, which says that there exists sub-exponential algorithm and linear kernels uh, on alpha dense graph for some numeral problems such as edge or cycle transversal, d way cut, and minimum bisection, okay? Um, and in general graph, there is no sub-exponential algorithm, I mean, under the uh, ETH assumption for this problem, but here using this structure and, and the ideas that has been developed before, we were able to, to design such things. Uh, and we also li obtain linear kernels for multi-cut and multi-way cut on this, uh, on, this, on this class. All right, so that's one big block with, okay, a lot of these ideas of, of sampling and estimating degree that we'll see a bit after. Uh, but we also showed some interesting results, at least to us, uh, which is that uh, if you look at the edge disjoint pass and the vertex disjoint pass, so these are a very famous problem that I will not define here. Um, then we also managed to find linear kernels for uh, edge disjoint pass and cubic kernels for vertex disjoint pass uh, on alpha dense graph. Uh, and so this is interesting because in general graph, this is known uh, not to admit uh, linear kernels under the usual assumption. Okay. okay, so that's really the result. We also show how to de-randomize the, not only the, the theorem of uh, edge road cycle transversal. So, so, okay, so that's the general result. Uh, and so, but for this talk, I will focus on really one thing, uh, which is the sub-exponential algorithm for edge road CT. Okay, so edge of cycle transversal, which will allow me to tell you how these ideas which have been developed for PTAS can be used in, in the world of parameterized uh, complexity. Um, and all of these ideas are very nice, so I think it's, they're worth uh, being explained here. Okay, so the, the problem, let me define it again. Uh, so let G give you a graph and K an integer. So the odd cycle transversal problem, so the edge odd cycle transversal problem, ask of the existence of a set S of K uh, edges. 
so that G minus S is bipartite. So can I remove K edges so that the graph is bipartite? Um, so this is very famously FPT in general graph. Uh, this is the most famous example of the iteration, iterative compression technique. Uh, in, and this is done in Gu et al. to 2006, so a long time back. Um, but we also know that under the ETH, uh, no, no sub-exponential algorithm um, exists. So no two to the little of K. Um, algorithm. Um, and so what we were able to show here is that if you, only, if you restrict yourself to alpha dense graph, then there exists um, a sub-exponential algorithm. And in fact, we have a two to the okay, big O of square root. So let us um, focus on this one. So suppose S is a solution. So S is a set of edges so that when you remove S, A and B is bipartite. Um, and then you look at the graph G, I mean, and you look at the partition AB in G. So not, not G minus S, but in G, what you have is you have edges crossing and then you have edges inside. And actually S is exactly the number of edges you have inside both partition, okay? So another way to say this problem is you want to find the partition AB, which minimizes the number of edges inside, right? Um, so it's, it's a max cut, but instead of counting the edges crossing, you count the edges uh, inside. Um, and in particular, what it means, it means that whenever you have a point x which belongs to a let's say this one for example then its degree in b is larger than its degree in a okay if the solution is optimal because if not then you can always uh, change side and then the, the size of the solution reduces okay so really if you want to know where so if a and b is the the optimal i mean the partition when you remove the optimal solution um and you're trying to guess if a point belongs to a and b the only thing you're trying to understand is whether a has more as a larger degree in A or in B. Okay, so, and really this degree inside these two parts will be the main, I mean, trying to understand this degree will be uh, the, the, the main goal of the algorithm. Um, okay, so the goal really will be to use some sampling argument, uh, one which are very similar to the one which we developed a long time ago uh, for developing PTASs, um, in order to estimate the degree inside A and B. Okay, um, and here we will be estimating this degree up to some, some constant fraction of it. Um, and here there is automatically one problem is that if you have a vertex X, that the degree of X in A and in B is roughly equal, um, let's say half, so half of, of the degree, then it would be hard for us to guess uh, where this, this vertex be, right, automatically. Um, and so here that the main trick we have to say is that if X sees half of the degree inside both sides, um, then health, then X is adjacent to a lot of uh, a lot of edges of the solution, and we will be able to use this fact uh, to bound the number of such bad vertices, right? So more precisely, um, this is what we call the dangerous vertices. Uh, and the first claim before bounding these vertices is to say that first we can assume that the number of edge, I mean the size of the solution, is smaller than some okay, constant times n squared, okay? Um, and, and the reason for that, and here the constant is alpha n over 200. And the reason for that is that there exists an easy two to the n algorithm for, to solve this problem. Uh, basically because what you have is when, it, when you take a partition, so you partition the graph into a and b, then the cost associated to this partition is just the number of edges inside both parts. Okay, so you can basically try all the partition and then output the, the partition which minimizes the number of edges inside. Okay, so that's an easy two to the n algorithm. But now if k is larger than some constant times n squared, then it means that n is a constant times square root k. Okay, and so two to the n now becomes two to the square root k. So here you have some constant. Uh, and so the, the easy two to the n algorithm is an easy two to the square root k algorithm, which is sub-exponential. So you can always assume that k is not too large uh, compared to n squared. Okay, so it's, it's actually way smaller than n squared. It's like alpha n over 200, which is quite small. Um, okay, and we use this fact to say the following thing. So from now on, S is the solution, let's say it's the best one, and A, B is the partition uh, associated to this solution. Um, and so let L be the set of vertices adjacent to more than alpha n over 200 edges of S. Okay, so L are the, edge, are the vertices which are adjacent to lot, a lot of, it, uh, of edges of the, the solution. And here a lot is, uh, square root k, but it's alpha n over 200. So remember that every point has degree alpha n. Um, so here it's okay, a linear fraction of the edges, but still small compared to the degree. Um, and what we can show is that the size of L is smaller than two to the square root k, which is 
small, alpha n over one over two, okay? And here, basically every time I say small, I say small compared to the minimum degree, right? Um, so how do we see that L is bounded? Well, if you count the number of edges of S adjacent to L, this is at least, um, so L times square root K because every point in L is adjacent to square root K edges. And then you divide this by two because every edges is counted at least at most twice doing this. Okay. So this is the number of edges adjacent to L. Um, and we know that, okay, this is number of edges of the solution adjacent to L. So this is at, at most K. And so basically you have this result. All right. So what we showed is the following. And then this is the, the big picture. So you have AB, which is the optimal partition. And then you have this, which I put in red here. This is L. So L intersection A and L intersection B. Um, and now, basically, these, these vertices, they're vertices which sees a lot of points inside both sides. OK, so they are the one for which estimating the degree will be hard. I mean, not estimating the degree, but guessing if this point sees more point in A or in B will be difficult. Um, but this set is small, and so what interests us is the remaining uh, set. So this is what we call A1 and AB1, so A minus L and B minus L. And now if you take a point in A1, then you know that its, its degree in A is smaller than alpha n over 200, okay? But its general degree is, is at least alpha n. So it means that the, what it sees in B, it's alpha n, okay, 1 minus 1 over 200, but let's say it would be alpha n, and when it's in A, it's like alpha n over 200. So intuitively, this point sees 200 times more points in uh, B than it sees in A. So the difference in the green B and in A, it's large. And what it means for us is that when we will be guessing the degree, it will be easy to see that this point belongs to uh, A and not in B, right? And that's the, the main thing, All right? And here, it's very important to say that L is, is quite small. OK, so now, as I said, we're trying to estimate the degree. And the question is how we do it. Um, and this is not very hard. Uh, we'll just use sampling. Uh, use sampling and the fact that every point has linear degree. So this is uh, very important. So suppose n1 is the size of a. Um, and now m is a multiset of t vertices pick uniformly at random in a, okay, inside a. Um, and now anytime you fix x, um, you, the expected value of the random variable, which is the intersection of the neighborhood of x and the m, the site m, which is the, the random set, is equal to t over n1 uh, to t times, okay, the degree of, a, of x in a divided by n1, right? And this is not very hard because every time you pick one vertex, um, then the, the, the probability that this vertex is a neighbor of x is exactly the degree of, a, uh, of x in a divided by n1, okay? And since you do it t, t times, then basically you multiply by Right, so this is quite easy. But uh, what it means is that if you now consider this value, so the, the size of the intersection of the neighborhood of x and in m times n1 divided by t, then its expected uh, value is actually um, the degree of x in a. Okay? So, and this is what we want to guess, right? I mean, this is the, the real value that we want to have. So if we sample in a, so we'll tell you, I will tell you a bit how we sample in A, but if you sample in A, then you will have good, I mean, the expected value of this is the, 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 the estimate of the degree of X in A. Okay, so this is how you estimate this. Uh, so this is the expected value. And now um, if you take standard bonds on the deviation of a binomial distribution, um, actually, if you look at the value this variable, so the, the size of n of x intersection m, it's a binomial distribution, um, and you use Markov inequality, it's very easy to show the following lemma, uh, which is basically what we want. So if m is a multi, a multi set of, okay, constant number of vertices speak uniformly at random in a, then with constant probability, uh, we have the following thing. The degree of x in a, it's one plus minus some constant, which has alpha over 200, but you have to be like a small constant compared to alpha, let's say, times this value, okay? And this is true for all the points, but a small fraction of it, uh, but this is still linear, okay? So when you do this sampling, and here the, the constant t um, depends on alpha, I mean, depends on how close you want to be for these two uh, constant, but let's say just constant depending on alpha, uh, then with constant probability, you get a good estimate of the, the, the green A for 99% of the points, let's say this, okay? 
So you guess the degree of every point, of almost every point um, inside A. All right, so that's the, the lemma. And then this is the main lemma that's been used uh, for 20 years uh, to solve this problem. Um, okay, so this is what happens if you sample in A, uh, but we don't know A, okay? So what do we do? Well, um, suppose A is bigger than B. I mean, like without loss of generality, we can always assume that. Uh, and the algorithm knows the size of A, okay? I mean, because you have to multiply by T over N1, so you need to know N1. And here, since there is at most N value, we can always try them all. Uh, so you suppose A is larger and the algorithm knows the, the value of the size of A. Um, and now, because the, the previous lemma only uses a constant number of vertices, uh, what happened is that if you pick uniformly at random T vertices in the whole graph, okay, so you don't know A, B, so you cannot sample in A, so you just sample in the whole graph. Well, with constant probability, and here it's at least one half to the T, all of the points that are selected, they belong to A. Okay, and if they all belong to A, then basically what you do, I mean, is you sample um, uniformly at random in A. So conditioned by the fact that all the points that you've selected, they belong to A, then what you have is the same distribution as the one we studied before. Um, so assuming, and this is true with constant probability that all the points belong to A, then in that case, these value, so the size of the intersection of W of X and M times N1 divided by T, is a good estimate of the degree of almost every point, so up to alpha over 200, uh, of the degree of x in a. Okay, so it's it's yeah. So this is good. Um, and so for the for for the remaining part of the algorithm, um, suppose this is what we do, and let x be the set of points for which it isn't a good estimate. Okay, so x is the small set but still linear. Uh, of points for which the, this estimate, the one that we do by just sampling uniformly at random in G, uh, doesn't give us a good idea of the, of, the, of the points. So we don't know X, but we know it's small. That's a good thing. Uh, okay, so, so from now on, suppose that M has been successfully picked. Uh, so remember that X are the points for which uh, the estimate is bad. And L are the points uh, so for which the degree in both sides can be large. Okay, so remember that L, so L was small, but L were the points for which it's hard to decide whether they belong to A and B if you just guess the degree, because that the degree in A and B of these points might be uh, comparable, let's say. Okay, but outside of these two things, uh, basically we're good. Um, so let B prime be the set of vertices so that, uh, okay, this estimate of the degree in A um, is at least half of the degree, so the degree of x divided by 2 plus alpha over 25. Um, so basically what is B prime is the set of points for which the estimate that you have tells you that, okay, way more than half of these points, of the way more than half of the neighbors of this point belongs to A. And if it's the case, uh, and if you assume that, okay, your guess is of the degree is successful, then these points must belong to B, right? Because it sees way more than half of the of this degree inside A, so you have to put it in the other side. Okay, and here way more is just alpha over 25. The constants are not super important, but I mean, you see the point. Uh, okay, so B prime, it's a first guess of what B should be. Okay, it's like the points that see more degree in A than in B. So B prime is our estimate of B. Um, and so the first lemma tells us that if X is a point in B, X do not belong to uh, big X, so the set of points for which the estimate is bad. And X do not belong to L, okay? So the set of points which is, which can see uh, a lot of, uh, name, of, of vertices in both sides, then X must belong to B prime, okay? So right, if the estimate of X is good and X belongs to B uh, minus L, then B prime will, will, will get this point, right? And here, okay, a few computations, but it's not very hard. Um, so because X belongs to B minus L, we have that the degree of X in A is at least the degree of X minus the number of edges uh, X is adjacent in the solution, okay? And this, by definition of L, is smaller than alpha n over 200, okay? So that's it. So the degree of X in A is at least the degree of X minus alpha n over 200. And now because X does not belong to the set of points for which the estimate is bad, we have that these estimation of the degree in A is at least the degree of X in A minus a small mistake, which is alpha n over 200. Uh, okay, and so that means uh, if you put these two together, we have that this estimate of the degree tells you that the, um, the degree 
of x in A uh, is at least the degree of x minus alpha n over 100. And because the degree of x is larger than alpha n, you have that this is larger than the degree of x over 2 plus alpha n over, 20, plus alpha n over 25. Okay, so that's just some computation, but basically it tells you that if x is a point which is way more in A than in B, and the estimate of the degree you have for x in A is not so bad, then you will know that this point must belong to B. Okay, and this is what B frames. Okay, so if you make the same computation, you can show that if x is a point of A um, and uh, the estimate is not bad, then again, this point cannot be, be, be in B prime, right? And here, the, the, the idea is that if x belongs to A, it means that the degree of x in A is less than half. So in order for the estimate to tell you it's half plus alpha n over 25, the mistakes you need to make is at least alpha n over 25. So this point might belong to x, okay? So, yeah, so that's the point. So this is what we do to guess basically B prime. I mean, to guess B, which give us B prime. And then we will do the same thing with A prime, which says that, okay, if the estimate of the degree in A is way less than half, so here it's half minus half n over 25, then you say that you must belong to A prime. And again, if you're pointing A and you're not in X union L, then you belong to A prime. And if, if you're pointing B uh, and you don't belong to X, then you, you don't belong to A prime. Okay, so basically A prime B prime is a first guess of what A and B should be. Um, and the only thing that is bad here uh, are the points which belongs to either X or L. Okay, and so the total side of this point is alpha n over 1 on that. Right, so that's what we do. So we do this sampling. It gives us a good estimate of the point of the degree inside A. And with this estimate, we say, okay, these are the points in A prime, these are the points in B prime, and you might have some of the points so that you cannot say, okay? If the estimate tells you, oh, you see half of the points in A, you don't know if you belong to A or B, okay? And these are the rest. But you know that if you look at all the rest, so the points which are not assigned, and the points which are assigned to A prime and B prime but are wrongly assigned, so they're in A prime but they belong to B or vice versa, um, then these points, so the, the points which are not correctly placed, uh, the size of them is at most alpha n over 100, right? It's x union L, and this is at most alpha n over 100. Uh, but this is very good for us, because this guess, okay, it's, it's a rough guess, and then you can make some mistakes. Um, but what it tells us is that now that we have this first case, we can make a second guess of what is the degree of a point in, let's say, B, by saying that the degree of a point in B so this value here is roughly the degree of a point in B prime plus minus alpha n over 100, okay? And here, because, I mean, this is true just because basically the symmetric difference between these two sets, so the intersection of X, in, uh, of the neighborhood of X and B and the intersection of this neighborhood and B prime is at most alpha n over 100, these equality is true for every vertex X. So now we don't even make mistakes for any one. This is a good guess. I mean, this is a good approximation of the degree inside B for almost, uh, for everyone. So before we had a good approximation for a constant fraction of points, so let's say 99% of the points. But now, because we did this first round of guessing and estimating where the point should belong, we have a, an estimate of the degree which is correct for every vertex X. And here, every is very important uh, because then we don't make any mistakes anymore. Okay, and so basically we'll do it, we do exactly what we did before. So estimating where a point should be, but now instead of using of the sampling to, to get an estimation of the degree, we just get, uh, we just use this partition to get an estimation of the degree. And as we see here, the, this is a good approximation for it. Okay, so now let SA basically be the set of points so that N of X intersection B prime is very large compared to, uh, I mean, it's larger than half of the, of the, of the degree of X. Uh, so let's say g of x over 2 plus alpha n over 50, and b, so sb, so be the set of points so that the degree in a prime is way larger than half of the degree, okay? So as we said, the degree, I mean, this value, it's a good estimate of the degree in b, in b and this value is a good estimate of the degree in a. Um, and so what we can show, and it's really the same argument as before, is that now that you, now that you make this estimate, because um, because of this, because you have this, this is true for every vertex X, okay? So you don't make any mistakes. 
Um, basically, what you have is that SA is included in A, and moreover, SA contains all the points in A1. So remember what A1 was. So these were the points uh, which is way more, these were the points in A, which is way more uh, vertices in B than in A. Okay, and what we do here is, what we say here is that these points will be able to figure out where they belong completely. And the same for B1. And by doing this, we don't make any mistakes. And this is all magical. Okay, uh, and again, it's, it's the same type of argument. So if X belongs to A1, okay, it means that the degree of X in B is larger than uh, the degree of X minus alpha and over 200. Uh, but we know that this is roughly the degree of X in B minus alpha and over 200, uh, minus alpha and over 100. So basically what you have is that this is bigger than the degree of X minus alpha and over 200 minus alpha and over 100. And again, since the degree of X is larger than alpha and you get, you get this inequality, okay? So if, if a point in A1, then it has to belong in S. So we basically reprove this. Um, and now we have to prove that no points in B um, belongs to SA. Um, but if Y belongs to B, then the degree of Y in B is less than half. Okay, this is fine. Uh, but now, because the intersection of the neighborhood of Y in B prime is a good estimate of the degree of Y in B, I mean, plus alpha and over 100, we have that this inequality is true. And so Y do not belong to SA. Okay, so this is, this is not large enough. Uh, so basically, this is what we have. So by doing this second round of guessing, um, using the, the previous estimate, what we have is the following. We have SA, we have SB, and these two sets, I mean, this is a subset of A, this is a subset of B. Uh, and then we have the rest, which are the points we are not able to say whether they belong to A or they belong to B. But the rest is included in L, okay? Because every point which is not in L, so they, they belong to A1 and B1, we, we were able to um, basically post, I mean, assign them correctly. Um, so this set of size, okay, square root K, okay, square root K over one alpha, this is uh, the first thing that we show. Um, and so now, to remark, the first thing is that until now, everything was did, everything we did was just sample constant number of points and then count the degree of the points inside this set, right? So uh, we did once and then we count the degree of uh, every point inside A prime and B prime, uh, but this is strictly polynomial. I mean, it's actually very fast. Um, so everything that we did now uh, was polynomial. And now the only thing that remains to be done is uh, guess where the points in R belong, okay? But since R has size at most square root k over alpha, uh, we can just try everything, right? We try every bipartition of R, uh, and then uh, once we guess the right one, we just count the number of edges inside both parts. Okay, so guessing all the bipartition of R costs two to the R, to the size of R, and this is two to the uh, square root K of alpha. Okay, and at the end, this is it. So by doing this, uh, we're able to find uh, the optimal partition in time, which is two to the uh, big O square root K of alpha um, for addresses. So, so we have a sub-exponential algorithm for uh, addressity on alpha dense graph. Uh, this approach, can be used uh, for a lot of problems where estimating the degree of vertices inside a constant number of parts is required. Uh, so many cut problems. So you can do, for example, minor number section, uh, but also you can do multiple cut problems. So like d y cut, multi y cut, uh, multi cut, and stuff like that. Okay, so here you can either get sub exponential or linear kernel or just linear kernel. Um, so we also show that all these algorithms can be drawn on mind. Okay. Um, and in fact, we can also show that all the p-tasses that existed before, I mean, not all actually, but some of the p-tasses uh, can also be generalized. And to the best of our knowledge, this is, uh, this is something new, uh, which is also uh, interesting. And then finally, let me remind you um, another result, which I didn't talk about today, um, because the, the approach is completely different um, and way more structural um, in a way. Uh, and the, the, so what we had is linear kernel for this joint pass and alpha dense graph. Uh, for edge Dijon past my photograph and cubic kernel for, for vertex Dijon. Okay, and then that'd be it. Thank you.